And 11th team could finally be on the way to Formula 1. Maybe. Andretti Formula Racing LLC have finally had approval from the FIA to join the Formula 1 grid, but just because the FIA has said yes, that doesn't mean that Formula 1 will be as accepting. So even though the FIA have given Andretti the go-ahead to start their Formula 1 project in hopes of getting a car on the grid by the 2025 season, before the tyres actually touch the tarmac, Andretti still need approval from the other Formula 1 teams and the commercial rights holders for Formula 1, which I feel like is a lot less likely to happen and could actually end up quite ugly for Formula 1 because they'll face the backlash not only from Andretti but also from general Formula 1 fans as well because even now it has to be said that getting to this stage for Andretti has been incredibly tough like they tried to link up with the Salva team but that eventually became the Audi project they tried to link up with Haas but Haas weren't really having any of it and the FIA have been incredibly clear about what's expected from a potential Formula 1 team to the extent that there were three other teams that also put themselves in the mix but only Andretti actually got approved and Andretti's report was over 600 pages long it included all of the financial proof needed to show that they could financially back a Formula One team and it also included technical depth including preliminary design works so they've already started putting together the skeleton of the Formula One car that they want to build in the future and I know that a team that comes into Formula One from Formula One's perspective wants to add value and growth but actually I think this team has a real vision and could deliver on track. I mean, the Andretti name carries a lot of weight in motorsport and has to be carefully considered. Plus, it has massive backing from General Motors and a huge fan base that is already built up in the States, somewhere that Formula One is absolutely desperate to try and grow. We've seen the Miami Grand Prix and the Las Vegas Grand Prix added to the calendar in the last couple of seasons. And that's because Formula One really wants to grow its fan base in America. So surely a huge American team that is backed by one of the biggest automotive companies ever should be a no-brainer for them to add them onto the grid as the 11th team but unfortunately the FIA and Formula One aren't quite on the same page like it's weird that the FIA has invited prospective teams to put forward their case to be on the Formula One grid Whilst Formula 1 hasn't seemed too excited to add new teams to the grid, they all seem fairly happy with just having 10. And usually when a new team is added, like take Haas for instance a few seasons ago, there's been some kind of dialogue between Formula 1 and the FIA and they both want to get a brand new team into the sport. Whereas in this case, however, the two don't really seem to have had too many discussions and Formula 1's statement after the approval by the FIA for Andretti was kind of like, Okay, I guess we'll look into it from our end now as well. So the FIA has just accepted someone for hitting all of their criteria, which is great even though Formula One doesn't really seem to want a new team right now. And I feel like Andretti are about to hit a massive wall in the other 10 teams that are already on the Formula One grid. I mean, Aston Martin's team co-owner Lawrence Stroll has already said he believes Formula One should remain at 10 teams. I mean, he said the business is on fire. Formula One's never been in a better place. And I believe if it ain't broke, you don't need to fix it. I'm a strong believer that it's working really well with 10 teams right now and believe that's the way it should stay. And obviously Lawrence is one of the biggest pieces on the Formula 1 grid. He holds a lot of power right now on the Formula 1 grid, has a lot of influence not only on Aston Martin but actually on other teams as well and he's already disapproving of the Andretti project coming in and obviously from the financial side of things that Lawrence will be interested in, you could argue he's kind of right. The biggest thing that Andretti actually bring to the table right now is growth in America which is something that Formula 1 is already doing quite well. Like we have three races in America now with Miami, Las Vegas and Texas. We already have an existing US team in Haas. We already have an existing US driver in Williams's Logan Sargent. So do we actually need the Andretti name to continue this growth in the American market? And at the end of the day, it will all come down to that revenue generated. Can Andretti produce enough extra excitement and income that splitting the commercial revenue between 11 teams rather than 10 teams doesn't cost any one of the other teams any actual money? Because any impact on any one of the 10 existing Formula One teams will be raised and will go against the Andretti team coming into Formula One. And the 10 teams have actually been very firm on the fact that they don't really want new teams to come in. They are very happy to split that commercial revenue 
revenue between the 10 of them and sharing another piece of the pie with an 11th team is not really something that they want to do. I mean, we've kind of already seen this with Aston Martin and Audi, two franchises that have more than enough money to start their own Formula One teams. And they're effectively building new Formula One teams from the ground up anyway. Like Aston Martin have built an entire new factory that could have been for a brand new Formula One team. But instead, they came in, bought an existing team and kind of repurposed what was already there. I think if Andretti were to come in, the teams would much prefer if they just bought one of their nine rivals, repainted one of the cars that is already on the grid, rather than having two extra cars on the Formula One grid that they actually have to race against, which is why I think Formula One might say no to Andretti. And I think there are two things that could spiral from this. First and foremost, if Andretti is rejected by Formula One, the FIA president has explicitly said there are legal considerations and it must never be forgotten that this is a sport first business second and so it would put Formula One at odds with the FIA which are two things that you kind of want working in harmony to get the best out of the motorsport itself but secondly it's just terrible for the fans and it's terrible for the reputation of Formula One in the United States like it's a market that Formula One is bending over backwards to try and get into as I've mentioned before the sport is becoming more and more Americanized each season anyway and I know that American sports kind of have franchise teams and they don't have relegation in the same way that we kind of do although Formula One doesn't have relegation in that way anyway but American sports usually have mechanisms in them that allow for expansion teams to come in and rejecting a huge name like Andretti even with sound reasoning is a huge risk and even away from the American side of things it's terrible for established fans as well the Formula One calendar is getting bigger and bigger every single season we're adding more and more gimmicks like sprint shootouts and sprint races to loads and loads of weekends to try and generate revenue for the sport so surely there's already enough money rolling around in Formula One that maybe Formula One themselves can subsidize the teams a little bit and think of this as a long-term project of getting Andretti in and getting the ball rolling for them because Fans will love to see a brand new team on the grid. They will love the new challenges that come with a new team and also the new drivers that will come with a new team. And at the end of the day, fans aren't bothered about the bottom line of a spreadsheet at the end of the year, but they are bothered about seeing wheel to wheel action. And I think that's the main thing that Andretti needs to really lean into over the next few months. Like they need to build buzz and excitement and get fans hyped about a brand new team coming into Formula One to the extent where Formula One can't really say no because there's so much buzz around it like speculate on possible drivers that will come into the Andretti setup and sponsorships that will follow Andretti into Formula One show that there is an excitement around this new team and that possible fans from other motorsports that are already Andretti fans in a different way will also come over to Formula One and that any small financial problems that will be in the short term will be massively outweighed by the positives that Andretti coming into the sport will have in the long term and I think the first step on that path has actually clicked into place already because Lewis Hamilton has come out in favor of Andretti joining the sport which is absolutely massive for them the most decorated driver ever coming out and saying that he would like to see Andretti join the Formula One grid and that it would be great for Formula One is certainly something that they can cling on to I mean he said there will definitely be people who won't be happy for me to be so supportive probably one of those being Toto Wolff who has a lot of money in Formula One and may lose out in the short term financially because of this but then Hamilton continues to say I think it's great because it's an opportunity for more jobs another two seats available for a potential female driver to come through it opens up more possibilities and I think it will be more exciting for the racing and I'm so glad that Lewis Hamilton came out because a lot of the other drivers were maybe a little bit more on the fence like Max Verstappen was quite unsure he said it's very hard to comment because I speak from the driver's side but I'm not a team owner so I don't understand their side of things which is absolutely fair enough for Max Verstappen to say but he was wasn't negative about them coming in he said everything I have seen so far plus I think the partners they have and the name they have shown they're a professional team and the rest of the grid Fernando Alonso was quite positive about it as well although they're fairly on the fence because they obviously don't want to annoy any of the higher ups in the team and I think Lewis Hamilton's in a slightly different position where he can be a little bit more outspoken than the majority of drivers on the Formula One grid I think having the Hamilton backing and the drivers being generally positive about it is a really good sign moving forward and Obviously, I appreciate that the teams that we already have on the grid need to come first. Like, I don't want there to be an 11th team on the grid in Andretti only for a couple of seasons time.
time, Williams and Haas go bankrupt and they both have to leave the grid and then we're suddenly back down to nine again. Like, it doesn't make sense to do that. And I understand that the standards set for a brand new team in Formula One have to be incredibly high and the criteria checking has to be really thorough, but I do think it would be a bad look for Formula One if they do reject this Andretti bid. If Formula One say no to Andretti and Andretti is still able to meet the majority of the criteria laid out with General Motors backing them, a huge American fan base, it basically says to a lot of future possible teams, there's no real point in trying to enter Formula One because if Andretti can't do it, then I don't think there's many other teams out there that would be able to do the same thing. But I'd love to know what you think. Would you like to see Andretti join the grid by the 2025 season, possibly 2026? Or would you like to stick with the 10 teams that we have now? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I also put together a video on the Red Bull Driver Academy and the small issues that I have with it moving forward. So click that link and I'll see you over there.